Woof. Hey guys, Totally Jerd here for another episode of Thundercrack. Now today I'm reading chapters 7 and 8 of the trash book I wrote when I was 13. So, I have no introduction to say because I have nothing to say. So let's just get into this. Chapter 7, The Power of Thunder. The beast roared its battle cries as swished through the air. So you want an air battle, do you? I shouted at the behemoth. Then so be it. And I soared into the air after the Garn Terror, dodging the mist it kept sending at me. The beast suddenly stopped, and I watched its hands, legs, and mouth all come together, and it create a mist bigger than itself. And in a furious moment, the beast sent it at me. And without thinking, I clapped both hands together, and a wave of lightning shot through the mist and onto the beast's belly, sending it plummeting to the ground. I don't think that lightning has weight, so it wouldn't really send it plummeting to the ground, unless it destroyed its muscles or something. I don't know, something happened. I was on the ground in a minute, and in two I was circling its body at 300 miles per hour, and I just thought that a whip would be perfect, and in my hand was an electrized whip, and I shot it at the beast's stomach, I shot it at the beast's stomach, and watched it extend hooks that lodged in its skin. Ignoring the huge roar, I twirled around the whip, and amazingly, the beast was taken with it. Well, if you didn't expect for it to take the beast with it as you spun it around, why the heck did you shoot it at the beast in the first place? Because obviously you thought something would have happened. I was now spinning at 500 miles per hour, (laughs) and then I thought of letting go when the whip dislodged and sent the beast flying. And in a split second, I was 50 feet above the beast, and I pointed the Thunder Waker at its heart and plummeted and plummeted down to the Garn Terror. And with its one final scream, it evaporated and I hit the ground and fainted. I awoke in a cathedral-like room with tables scattered around and symbols engraved on marble pillars reaching 10 metres into the roof. And in the far corner sat an old man who was humming gently to himself. H, hello? Who is it? I exclaimed shrilly. Sit down, said a ghostly voice. I am... (coughs) I can't do that. I am Thundi of the Sages Five. I am the old sage of the Thundercrack. And no, you are not dead, he said like the voice before, and I was astonished at how he knew what I was thinking. Please, let me speak. No interruptions. You are Mike Mitchells of Earth. You are to take my place as the Thunder Sage, but you are not a normal one. You are a sage of the Thundercrack. (laughs) Every time he says that, a little part of me dies. A very special Thunder Sage. Your job is to go around to all the villages of fire, iron, forest, and water and fight their champions to gain their trust. And then, and only then, shall you go to Dark Lord in Muntai's castle and defeat him. You must do this, Mike. My time is short. I can't hold the enchantment much longer. I'll talk to you soon. Save Wendum. Do this, Mike. Mike. Look, I actually put effort into this part. Have a look at this. Have a look. Look. See? Fade. Whoa, it gets smaller. It gets smaller. That's some proper effort right there, guys. Mike. Mike, wake up. I awoke with a start and saw Luke on Farborn. You were knocked out for quite a while there, Mike. Are you okay? I am fine, I lied, while rubbing my throbbing temple and staring around as my surroundings came into view. Where are we? Are we ho? HALT! Screamed a voice from behind. Lock them up! They have stolen the Thunder Waker! And we were attacked, and the last thing I saw was a dart hit Farborn in the neck when it all disappeared. That was a really short chapter, uh, probably the shortest so far. But now it's on to chapter 8. Escaping from an elfish jail. Isn't it elven? Like, elfish, that just sounds selfish. It's elven, not elfish. Oh my goodness. Did you get them? asked a strange voice through the veil. Locked and ready for torturing, replied a military-like voice. Wake them up. By the way, what did you find in their pouches? Sir, they didn't have any pouches, but they had a stolen artifact. What, Sergeant? They had the Thunder Waker, sir. What? Go get them immediately. That's an order, Private. Sir, yes, sir. You called him a Sergeant before. He says, what, Sergeant? Then he answers, and then he said, what? Go get them immediately. That's an order, Private. Sergeants are not the same as privates. Sir, yes, sir. I got up slowly and painfully, feeling cuts and bruises all over my upper body. As I got up, I realised that my legs were wobbly and I couldn't stand properly. 
I heard sounds all over the place, and my eyes eventually stopped being dizzy. Hello? I asked questionably. Anyone here? It's not questionably. That means that you're questioning someone. Like, someone's questioning your actions. It's questioningly. Not questionably. English! Hello? I asked questionably. Anyone here? Suddenly I heard footsteps outside and a young voice yell, You in there, no tricky business, or... But he didn't finish that sentence, because while he walked in, I smashed his head against the bars of the cage, knocking him out. I grabbed the bow and arrow out of his sheath and quickly exchanged clothes with him. And while I was searching my new clothes for any weapons, I found a knife and quickly I walked out of the cell, sneaking behind corners like a boss. Now I'm referencing old memes. You guys remember that like a boss meme? Yeah, uh, I referenced that in a uh, book. <laughs> I searched the man for... Oops. I kept walking until I found an elf with its face at the wall where some kind of hologram was being shown. I snuck up on him with my knife in hand and grabbed his neck in a headlock and drove the knife straight into his neck. He stumbled and then fell. This kid is psychotic. He's meant to be 13. And yet, he, no moral question about killing a man. He is not human. He killed someone for the first time as a 13-year-old. And it's just like, <laughs> it's required. He's a sociopath. He's psychotic. I searched the man for more arrows and found keys to multiple cells. I continued on in the creepy wooden corridors and eventually came to a large room containing dozens of elves sitting at tables all around the room. And in the centre being held by three guards was... Luke! I was not dumb. Well, that's questionable. I was not dumb, so I decided to come back once I had got back my lightning rod. But unfortunately for me, that plan was proved wrong by them bringing it in and putting it on the table. This will be tricky. Sergeant Rainers, someone suddenly shouted at me. Go and bring me the dragon. Um, sir, yes sir. I shouted back to him weirdly. I quickly rushed off to find the dragon, searching through every room until I found a laboratory kind of place with a small jar in the centre labelled Reptilian Thunderous Draconis, and I stashed it in my pouch. But no matter where I searched, I could not find Farborn, so I returned. Ah, uh, yeah, you are stupid, because literally... Reptilian Thunderous Draconis. What? It, it's really convenient, isn't it, that... Even though he didn't know it was Farborn in the jar, because it is Farborn, it's pretty obvious, like Reptilian Thunderous Draconis, so obvious. But it's kind of convenient how he picks up the one jar that houses his best friend in it, like his dragon in it, and he stores it away so that he won't have to go back and find them. My book was very convenient that way. Sergeant, he said, give me that jar. Um, so yes sir, I replied amazingly. How did he know, I thought. I gave the jar to him and watched him pull out a miniature dragon from the jar, which looked like... Farborn! Shocker. Did you, said the judge, knowingly steal this thunder waker and transmorph this dragon? No, never, replied Luke. You lie, shouted the judge. Whip him. What? What's the point of even taking him to court and judging him? If you're just going to discredit everything he says and call him a liar. That's... What's the point? I watched in helpless agony as men began whipping Luke. And I suddenly got so angry that the jar containing the Thunder Waker fell off the table. Which smashed on the ground. And I suddenly felt the Waker fly at me and my arm move automatically to catch it. It's on, I shouted angrily. They began pulling out their bows, which lit up like a green lantern, and started shooting arrows that were pulsating with magical energy, blowing up wherever they hit. That's not good. And I... <laughs> like, you're being attacked by a horde of men, and they're shooting uh, magical arrows at you. And you just say, that's not good. And I started shooting lightning bolts at them, which vaporised in a few metres. And an arrow was about to hit me when a man in an azure robe appeared in front of me and conjured up his shield made of lightning. He started sending electrized elves flying at the wall. Aha! Thundi, you finally came, said the judge, whose wrist started shining with green light. Yes, Cronut, my young friend. I came for the young Thunder Sage. Well, he is ours, he replied. I guess we can't come to an agreement, he shouted as he sent a bolt of lightning at the man, who reflected it at the wall. Go get your friend, he whispered to me, and your dragon. I nodded back. Let's begin, Thunder Eye, said the man, and they started having a fierce battle between sages. 
I ran over to Luke and untied him. Then I sprinted over to Farborn and picked her up. When I heard a tiny voice say, Help me, Mike. Just then, Thunday I was... Just then, Thunday I was hit by a shot of green light and fell on a heap on the floor. So, said the man, let's settle this man to child. What does that, what does that mean? So, said the man, let's settle this man to child. Oh, he was talking to Mike. He was saying, let's settle this man to child. Because Mike's a child. But just then, Thunday I got up at the speed of lightning. Let's see what you did there. But just then, Thunday I got up at the speed of lightning and started moving his hands back and forth so fast that they appeared as blurs. And I saw lightning come out of them just as fast. And in under two seconds, the elf was lying in a smouldering heap. Come on, child, he said to me hurriedly. Okay, I replied to him. We climbed to the top of the tree, and me and Luke, meant to be Luke and I, shot back any people trying to get us. At the top, Thunder Eye gave Farborn to me, and told me to cover it with my hands and say, Lays on Thaiza. And immediately my hands started glowing, and Farborn grew to a normal size. But at that moment, hundreds of elves rushed to the top. Run! shouted Thunder Eye, as he held back the advancing elves. We climbed on Farborn and flew into the air. I thought we had made it when a giant ball of green hit her wing and we went down, and I felt helpless as we plummeted towards the ground. And when we hit, I heard a sickening crunch and was blasted out of my seat and hit a tree, making my vision slowly fade until I slipped consciousness. Until I slipped consciousness. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, this is literally killing me from the inside out. Just, just reading how bad I was at English. Now, I'm actually alright at English. Back then, couldn't read, I couldn't write, well I could read and write, yeah, but not very well, and that's the point. Maybe I shouldn't have made a book at that age, maybe, no, I'm glad I made a book at that age actually, because now I get to reminisce and just read about how, how dumb it is, really, because this was a really bad book. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to my channel and uh, leaving a bit of support. You can always support me on Patreon, which gives me a bit of money, because I'm actually saving up to get a new CPU, because it is getting really hard editing now with my i3. Like, really hard. I'm probably going to have to come out with a video on it. But uh, if you guys want to support me, yeah, there's Patreon, and then there's also just subscribing or sharing my videos with your friends. I hope to see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.